Well, good afternoon and happy new year, Fly Tires. Uh, as you can see, Tanner is uh, has appropriate headwear for New Year's. You, uh, on the last uh, on the last uh, fly tying we did, I think it was the one with Flagler, right? It was the tie off. You had uh, you had your Christmas your Christmas lights on, and now you've got your New Year's hat on. So, thank you, Tanner, for bringing a little cheer, New Year's cheer, to the broadcast today. Say something, Tanner. You're muted. <laughs> no, Hello. Yeah. Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're going to start. Tanner is producing today. And Julia, Julia's not here. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but uh, Tanner's a great guy. He's no Julia, but nobody's Julia. Phil isn't a Julia either. Um, so anyway, if you have questions while I'm tying, Tanner will read them off, and I will try to answer them if I can. I see we have Brian from Glens Falls, New York, which I can almost see from my desk here if I could see over the mountain, and Peter from Roseberry, Tasmania, which I definitely can't see here from my seat, and Bill from Indiana, and I'm sure we got a few more people on there. If, you were, uh, if you've never been on one of these live tying sessions, with us, welcome. Um, this is your ah, and there's Torbjorn. I hope I pronounced that right from Sweden, and Rick from Colorado Springs. Anyway, um, if you've never been on one of these, um, this is your opportunity to ask questions as I'm tying, so that I can back up and uh, show it again, or I can at least try to answer your question while it's hot in your mind, uh, as opposed to watching a, a video that's not live and you ask a question and you may or may not get an answer depending on whether the person that made it is um, is monitoring their YouTube channel. Anyway, today we're going to tie a fly uh, that uh, that you can use for almost any game fish. It's uh, anything that that'll eat a eat a bait fish or anything that'll eat a large fly. It's a feather game changer, and. Um, I think that the game plain chocolates game changer type flies, of which there are endless variations um, using connected shanks, are, are some of the most brilliant flies and one of the most innovative flies that has come around in a long, 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 long time. And um, this is a, a a feather version of the game changer, and the. Um, the advantages of, of tying a game changer with feathers uh, are that uh, they're a little bit lighter than the ones that you would make from some kind of brush or, or body material. Uh, they shed water really well, so they're, they're quite a bit easier to cast than some of the other game changers that are quite air resistant. Um, what else can I say about them? Uh, they wiggle really well in the water. Uh, the disadvantages are you, you need the right feathers to tie them. You, you do, need, um, do need certain feathers, and you need them in a variety of sizes to tie one that looks right um, and, and that acts well in the water. But they have so much action. Uh, they really look like a bait fish or, or something that's alive in the water. They're the closest thing we have to a spinning lure. Yet, unlike, unlike some of the flies we tie that look like a spinning lure, these require a lot of craftsmanship. You know, you can make a, a spoon fly out of epoxy, or you can make a worm fly or an egg fly. There's not much to them, but uh, tying one of these uh, requires a little bit of skill and a fair amount of time. Um, the, um, you know, the game changers take a while to construct, and, and we, may be, we may be at this for over an hour today. But the thing is, uh, that they're really expensive to buy. I don't know how much they are, like 12, 12 bucks, somebody, 12 bucks a piece if you buy them, uh, because they are so complicated. They require a lot of parts and uh, a lot of labor. So um, we're going to tie one today. It's not that hard of a fly to tie, I don't think, if you have the right materials. That's, um, that's what you need. And you do need shanks, and you do need a little wire, and then you need various sizes of heckle. But once you have that, uh, ready to go. So 
why don't we why don't we start unless there are any i don't see any questions yet do you tanner just everybody saying hi all right then i am going to start tying so you do need you do need some of these shanks <clears throat> and i'm gonna start start with a tail shank a seven millimeter tail shank which is this thing here and you can also you can also start the tail part just with a shorter shank if you don't have these tail shanks. Um, and all the tail shank is is a, basically an eye and a little piece of wire, an eye and a little piece of wire, uh, and uh, just a, a very very short shank to tie on. So I'm going to put this in my vise. Take out the take out the finished fly there, and we'll show you all one later. And this is a uh, I'm gonna move this down a little bit here. Move this camera down a little bit. This is a Ranzetti uh, uh, vice jaw that is designed for game changers. I actually like it for a lot of different flies. Uh, not just game changers and you're going to put that piece of wire right in the end there and secure it so this is going to be your tail and of course we're going to start our thread i'm using white 60 thread i think blank chocolate uses gel spun but he ties a lot bigger flies and i'm no i don't care for gel spun unless i have to use it so I know I can get away with a uh, 6.0 thread on this. I'm going to wind up, wind all the way to the back of that little shank. Make sure that's in focus. Yep. Okay. And then <clears throat> to start this, I'm going to start, you need two kinds of flash for this fly. Uh, you need something that's fairly, sh has fairly short fibers like ice chenille. And then you need a, a longer flashy stuff. Uh, this one happens to be, oh, bump this exposure down a little bit so you can see it better. Uh, this happens to be a folding, uh, folded palmering chenille, but you can use you can use different materials. Uh, they all look a lot alike. I mean, you could use this uh, Spectrum Glimmer Chenille, and you can you can cut it uh, to various lengths before you tie it in. Uh, you could use this Chocolates uh, Glass Minnow Chenille. Um, this is kind of the official stuff, the filler flash. And um, you could even use this for really big flies. You could use this bait fish emulator. All of these are a, a cotton cord uh, with flashy stuff attached to it. So I'm going to start out with this uh, hairline folding palmering chenille. But again, any, any long flashy chenille will work for this. And I'm going to find the end of it. Now it's going to go all over the place. Trying to find the end of it somewhere. There's an end. Nope. There's an end. And I'm just going to cut a short piece off. Like so. Get the rest of it off to the side. And then I am going to come in and just remove a few fibers from along that uh, cord that holds these together so I can tie that little nub in. And then I'm going to come over to my hook and I made that nub a little long so I'm going to cut it shorter. And I'm going to just tie that cord in there, wind it all the way to the back. 
of that tail shank all the way to the back, like so. And then I'm going to take this and fold it. So that it all streams back and you may have to kind of work it work it back this is going to be our tail i would take maybe four turns or so on there I'll take one more and then i'm going to tie it off Take a couple turns, cut it. I'm gonna pull all these back because they don't always go back the way you want them to. And you just wind back a little bit on there like so. Now we want our tail to be kind of flat. And so what you can do is take some UV cure epoxy and soak into just the base of that and then hold it flat like so and just hit it with your light and then it'll kind of kind of stay in place in that vertical orientation you don't have to do this and some some people will will uh, make tails out of a different material and really trim them uh, neatly to the shape of a fish, but I'm not going to do that here. And then I'm going to cut this a little bit shorter, like so, and move this over a little bit. You can see that. So there's part of your tail. Now, the next thing you're going to do is take a piece of white schloppen. And schloppen are feathers from the back of a chicken all the way back toward the tail. And schloppen is all web. There's no, there's no uh, like dry fly hackle barbels on this stuff. It's all web. These are big feathers. And you want to pick a fairly nice wide one out of a package for your tail. There's a good one. Yeah, that one's good. Now I'm going to take another one. And you'll learn, you'll learn exactly what. Uh, and you want to try, try to find one that's fairly straight and even, not kinked. You can steam these if they're not terribly straight. So... Again, material selection is, you know, like, like a lot of, of parts of fly tying is so important. I'm going to take this feather here. So now I've got a piece of schloppen. And I am going to come up to the tip. You don't want, you don't want, the fibers that are way close to the tip here because they're too short and I want them longer for this tail. So I'm going to come into about here and that should give me enough. It's a nice long feather. And then I'm going to trim this. You know what? I'm going to get a piece of black background paper because you can't see that white very well there. There we go. How's that better? Should have started that way. Okay, so that's going to show up a little better. I'll adjust my exposure here a little bit. There we go. Okay, that looks better. I'm going to take this and just trim that tip off short and come in and just trim these fibers. This is gonna give you nice little nubs to, to tie in. So then I'm gonna take this with the, uh, the shiny, if it were a shiny side, but the curve, 
the convex side of this facing me. And I'm going to tie in that feather. And then I'm going to fold it. And by folding it, I'm trying to get all the fibers to come off to one side. And then I'm going to fold it so that it streams back. And you want to keep working these fibers as you fold them. So you want to keep going, coming in and folding. And you can go right up to the eye on these. You can even overlap it a little bit if you want. You don't have to go in uniform turns. You can kind of cram it in there. Because you want a nice full tail on this fly. So I'm going to I'm going to just keep kind of wrapping it on top of itself. Luckily, these schloppen feathers in this part of them have a fairly thin stem so that you can really cram it in there. So there's my tail. I'm going to tie this off. Trim it. And then I'm going to stroke these fibers back and wind over them just a little bit so that they stream back. And there's my tail section. It's going to be nice and wiggly. And then I will whip finish here. Now, I'm going to use UV Cure Epoxy again. You want to epoxy each step of this because these things are time consuming and you don't want them to fall apart. So you want to make sure. And if I, and I, you know, for a lot of things, I prefer regular head cement. Uh, but because I'm going to be, building this fly in sections I don't want I don't want to um, be uh, working my feathers back on some wet head cement because they'll stick to it so I am going to use UV cure epoxy on this fly okay so the tail is set next thing we're going to do is take one of our um, Oh, <laughs> I just dumped all my shanks out. Well, I got a big choice here. <laughs> you don't get this many in a package. I bought like three packages and put them all in one container. Anyway, uh, word to the wise. Uh, when, when Blaine Chocolate and a lot of people tie these flies, they use successively bigger shanks. So they might start with a 10, they might go to a 12 or a 15 and work up through, um, work up through the fly. And to avoid, to avoid having to buy all those different sizes of shanks, what I do is I just make all my body sections the same length. So there's my tail section. And then I just put in usually four uh, 10 millimeter shanks in there just so I don't have to, you know, buy, buy a whole bunch of different sizes and Blaine chocolate might use like seven or eight sections on his flies. I'm not that patient. I put four body sections in mine. In fact, I think I'm only going to put three in this fly. Um, cause I want, w one reason is I want a shorter fly. I want to use this for trout and bass and I don't want this thing to end up being six or eight inches long. So, I usually put four and I'm going to put three in um, and they're all going to be 10 millimeter shanks just to just to simplify it and to, you know, eliminate the need to have to have all these different sizes of shanks. And then I find that these shanks, you need to open them up just a little bit. So what I do is I take a pair of pliers and I grab onto the round end of it and just open that slightly just so I can slip it over the Started with the wrong side. I just opened that up just a bit. 
I find it easier to uh, slip it. And so before you take your previous section out of the vise, you're going to, it's a lot easier to put that shank in there while it's in the vise. And then you just move back and you, this is why, this is why this uh, Renzetti shank vise is nice because that little thing can sit down in that depression there. Okay. And to close that gap, you just start your thread again. Like so. And that'll close that wire. Close that wire up for you. And then you want to wind all the way back. Almost to the almost to the other the other piece. You just need to leave enough room so that this thing has freedom to wiggle. So you don't need to go, you don't need to leave that much space. You can start tying right there. All right. So uh, you can tie all of these just with feathers, but adding a little bit of filler flesh or ice chenille in front of each feather does make it kind of nice. Adds a little fullness to the body and it adds a bit of flash to the body. So I'm going to pull out some ice chenille, any short, you know, uh, any short sparkly chenille of your choice will work. And this will be enough probably to finish the fly. And then I'm going to try to clean up these this end here so that I can tie this in without tying down a lot of fibers. I'm just going to try to get myself a little nub there to tie in. And then stroke it back so that that that's just extending from my fingers and tie this in right in front of that loop and i want to go about probably halfway with this stuff so this stuff doesn't fold as easily uh, as the the longer stuff you have to do the best you can but you want to Apply a fair amount of pressure and just try to keep that stuff so that it points backwards toward the tail. If it doesn't all do it, uh, we can fix that in a minute. So I'm going to take two to three turns of that there. Quick question, Tom. Yeah. So uh, B. Rice says, the circular part of the shank should be closest to the tail and the triangle at the front. Yeah. Question. Yep. Mm -hmm. Some of these don't have the, the triangular ones with the triangular front is a newer style of these shanks. And they, they uh, allow a little bit more action. Uh, some of them just have a loop on either end, just a plain old loop. But these newer ones, yeah, the triangle should be, Pointing toward the front. Now you can see I got all that I got all that stuff around there, and what I'm going to do is try to stroke that back, and then come back over on top of it, and that'll push most of that stuff backwards, like so. And if you got any in the eye, don't worry too much about stuff in that eye here, because as long as that that next piece. Uh, is available to move freely, it's not going to show. So it's not like the eye of a hook. You don't need to keep that super clean. Now, the trick to making a good feather game changer, as well as having schloppen, is to get yourself a hen saddle of the right color. And I, I usually tie mine in white. In fact, I tie all my game changers in white, whether it's a, a feather one or not, because I can always color the top of the fly with, um, with a 
permanent marker. And that way you have some, you know, you can tie them all in white and then you have some freedom to change the colors after the fact. Now, the reason you want a hen saddle is because you have smaller ones here, slightly bigger ones as you come up to the top and then and then larger ones at the very top. And this will allow you change that exposure here a little bit. This will allow you to get that nice taper in your fly. So the for the first section, I'm going to take one from near the near the back or near the near the bottom of the cape. So I'm going to grab a feather from there and you want that feather to just cover the joint of the preceding section. So that's going to be good. I'm going to check it and make sure that's going to be fine. I'm going to fold this like I did before. Here I want to get a little bit more of that feather. And I'm going to do the same thing. I am going to cut the tip off. Like so. And tie it in. Nice and tight. Really tight here to secure it. And then I'll bring my thread all the way up to that eye. And I'm going to fold this just like I did the other one. And these will twist on you. So you have to just kind of manipulate that stem and keep folding. And if it doesn't go exactly the way you want, that's okay because uh, you can stroke it back and, and make that sweep back the way it should, should go. And you can go all the way up into the, into the fuzz a little bit here, into the fuzzy part of the feather. That'll give it some nice, nice flowing. So you can see I'm going right up into the, right into the fluff of the feather. Tie it off. Trim the end. And it's not flowing back quite the way I want it to. So I'll just grab it all with my fingers. And that's good enough. Whip finish that. Tom, we have a question. Yeah. A couple questions, actually. Uh, first okay. one is from Tyler. If you used more material in the tail, will you get more action? Uh, I don't know. I think you want the tail to swing freely, and if you make it too bulky, it might not swing, but I don't know. Good question. Uh, Nick asks, what are some good colors to use besides white? Whatever color you like in a streamer. Black. You're limited in hen saddles to, um, there aren't that many colors available, and I wish there were more colors available. There's a grizzly dyed brown, which is one I like a lot for kind of sculpin type patterns. Um, but I, I think, you know, honestly, I think if you tie some in white and you tie some in black, you're going to be in good shape. <laughs> um, uh, but you can... But you can, you can add, you can make these any color you want. <laughs> that might be the answer to this one. Uh, Michael asks, have you tried alternating olive and dark sections to imitate par marks of a small Berkey to trigger cannibal monster brook trap? No, but that's a great idea. That's a great idea. It's all for now. Okay. All right. So I'm going to prepare another shank. And again, if, you know, some people would make this a, a, a little bit longer shank, but I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to make, and I'm only going to put three on here just because these start to look the same. <laughs> and uh, I want to show you how to build the taper 
in the fly without having to, you know, keep you here for an hour and a half. So I got that on there. Then I'll just do the same thing. Secure that in there. Make sure it's tight. Start my thread again. This is a good time for questions because I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing. So anybody that has a question, and I, I like to cover that whole shank. You don't want to build up too much of a bump at one end because then it's harder to wind the hackle. And I'm going to take my, my, uh, cat or my, uh, Ice chenille, tie it in, all the way back, wind it, try to get it to go back if you can. Maybe two turns here looks like enough. Tie it off. Push it back, wind back over it, get it in place. Trim these if you want, if they bother you. Again, it's not going to matter. Now, this is the this is the key to having a good looking, realistic taper. Now I'm going to come up about two rows of feathers. Because this feather here is going to be a little bit longer than the one that I just tied in. So it's going to give me a gradual taper in this fly. And one thing I should have done before I start is check it to make sure it is a little bit longer. And yeah, it is. So I'm going to fold that and cram it in there. And keep stroking those things back there and they, they should go where you want them to. and maybe a little fuller. Now, if I were starting to use um, longer shanks, I might have to put two feathers in. But since all my shanks are the same length, I'm just gonna use one feather. So you can see that's a little bit wider than the section before. Stroke all those back. Get them out of the way. Whip finish. Get rid of that. Hit it with the UV. Have some more questions, Tom. Okay. Uh, our good friend Roger Bird wants to know if you can mix colors. Of course you can. Of course you can. It might be very interesting. But Roger knows that I'm boring, so I just use one color. Ed asks, are the shanks available in material other than metal? Not that I know of. Just the wire. Just the wire shanks. Okay. I'm going to grab another shank. Have you used them for Atlantic salmon? I have not, but I have used them for steelhead game changers. 
and they do work quite well swinging for steelhead. I'm opening that shank up. All right. I've not use them for Atlantic salmon. I don't. I don't do a lot of Atlantic salmon fishing, and when I, because I don't, I tend not to experiment as much because I just don't get to do it very much. And I and I so I stick to really traditional patterns for Atlantic salmon fishing. Any other questions? Because I'm really doing just the same thing here. I could probably find a few more. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a couple from Instagram. People are asking if you've been to Finland uh, or fishing in Finland and fishing in Iceland. No and no. No and no. No and no. Uh, let's see. Would you recommend using this for steelhead season? From Gary? I would. I would. Yeah. I would recommend using this any place you would use a streamer because that's all it is. Any place where fish eat bait fish or big attractor patterns, I would use these. Here we go. Uh, someone asks, uh, I bought some copter scissors. What yeah. materials should I not cut with them to keep them sharp? <laughs> well, this, that's, uh, that, those are the scissors that I use. As you guys probably know, I love them. Um, I would avoid cutting tinsel and wire for sure. Uh, other, I would, I would, I wouldn't cut uh, plastic with them, you know, like a gummy minnow stuff or uh, anything that's sticky. And I wouldn't cut anything metal with them. Other than that, I, I cut deer hair, bucktail, hackle, um, this stuff here. Pretty much, pretty much anything, um, anything that you know that you would cut with a pair of fly tying scissors. Mark asks, "How much does this fly retail for?" I think you want to look it up. We sell them, Tanner. You want to look it up? I think they're about twelve bucks a piece. Yeah, I'll I'll find it and I'll put the link in the comments. Yeah. Well. Oh, let's see. Now we don't sell feather game changers. We sell their their standard game changers, but same same process. What is the UV pinpoint applicator that you are using? And they're assuming that what you're using is UV thin. I'm using UV thin. Yeah, I'm using Loon uh, UV thin. Edward asks, can you use larger chenille to add bulk and taper to the body? Yes, you could. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Do you ever find you fish these time-consuming flies differently than easy is, size streamers because you're scared of losing them? That's a good question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If, if it's a really snaggy river where there's you know overhanging trees and i need to cast tight to the trees i will think twice about fishing a game changer yes absolutely <laughs> okay so now we're going to come to the very top and i'm only going to tie three sections normally I'd, i would tie four and i might come in here almost to the top but i'm going to come to the very top of this uh, hen saddle to get the longest fibers I can. The widest fibers, there's a good one there. And I'm gonna do, oh, I got an extra one. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. Make sure, I'm gonna make sure this is long enough, first of all, because I want it bigger than the preceding one. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger. I might look for one that's a little wider though. So I'm gonna come back in here and see if I can find one that looks a little wider than the rest of them. That might do it. We'll try this one.
couple more questions, Tom. Sure. Another one uh, from Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your tips on keeping the sections tapered and consistent each time you tie Game Changers? Well, for a feather game changer, again, you've got to have uh, you've got to have a, a skin or a cape where you can select feathers in an increasing diameter. You can't just tie this from a bag of partridge or, or hen hackle because you won't be able to get the taper. Uh, when you tie a game changer out of the uh, chenille type stuff, the body body material, the Blaine chocolate body material or CCT fiber, then you trim it as you go. You trim it with scissors to get the taper. But for these, this is a natural taper, so you need natural materials that have different diameters. Uh, FT Connor asks, have you used them for smallmouth bass? Can you tie this yes, with I a have. stinger hook? I don't tie them with a stinger hook. And there's a number of reasons. One is that I don't think you need them because when fish eat this fly, they eat it. They don't, they don't nip at it. And the ones that nip at it, I don't really want because they're smaller. So it keeps smaller trout away. It keeps little bass and panfish away. I don't want the nippers. They're going to nip at it. They don't really want it. If they really want this fly, they're going to eat it. Um, and uh, stinger hooks, uh, stinger hooks don't hook very well because uh, you're not in direct line with the hook when you set the hook. It, you know, it could be swinging one way or the other, and you can't get as solid a hook set with a stinger hook. And also, um, they'll often they often foul the fish when you're playing them, or or they'll end up stuck in your finger when you're trying to unhook a fish, and they foul when you're casting. So the, there, there are a number of reasons for not putting a stinger hook on. I don't, I don't like them and I don't use them. It would ruin the action of this fly as well if you put, tried to put a stinger hook on the end because it would weight down the end of the fly. Gotcha. So lots of reasons that you would not want to use a stinger hook. Let's see. Jake wants to know, what's the smallest hook size changer that you would tie? Well, you know, you can you can get these micro shanks that are much tinier, and you know you can you can tie them that are, you can tie ones that are, uh, you know, an inch long. I don't know what the hook size was because you can put any hook you want on these, right? I'm going to use a size six hook on this one when I get when I get to the hook part of it. Phil asks, what's the best fly for my home waters where you've never fished? Go to your local fly shop or check the internet, check the Orvis fishing reports. That's uh, that's from the Phil Monaghan there. Oh, figures. <laughs> he knows I hate that question. All right, so I don't have a, I don't have, this is not quite as long as I would like it. So I've got a little bit of a taper there. Yeah, there's some taper there. Not a lot of taper, but we will fix that at the end. Okay. Time is it anyways? All right. Yeah, we're only gonna tie three sections, kids, because you kind of get the idea here. <laughs> we're not gonna do a Blaine chocolate seven section game changer here. I don't know how much better the action is between a, a seven section and a four section the way I tie them. There probably is a reason he put so many sections on this. But he, he's a lot of his flies are also tied from musky and stuff like that. So they're really long. And I don't, I'm not particularly interested in tying a really long fly. I want this for trout and bass. Trout and freshwater bass and striped bass. Striped bass love this fly. Redfish love this fly. 
Anything that eats a bait fish loves this fly. All right, now I'm going to take that out and put a hook in. And this is a B10S size six. Because again, I don't want I don't want this thing to be really long. I don't want to keep adding sections because that's going to make my fly too big. And the first thing you want to do is just cover the shank with tying thread. Not neatly. You want to cross it back and forth so you create a little roughness there. Like that. And stop about there. And you're going to take some, uh, you can use, some people use backing. I like wire. I like this uh, Senyo's, Senyo's intruder trailer wire. It's very thin. It, this, this needs to be strong enough, but not super strong because there isn't going to be any, um, there isn't going to be a large amount of tension on the back end of this because I don't have a stinger hook on here. So I don't need to worry about this. I only need to worry about this being strong enough to, to hold up under lots and lots of casts. But I don't need to worry about holding a fish. So I don't need to, I don't need to have this stuff tests, I don't know, 20 pounds or something like that, which is plenty. So I'm going to take my wire and attach it probably to the far side or on top. Doesn't really, doesn't seem to matter. I'm going to come all the way to the back. And then I'm going to take my, take my section that I tied and pass the eye through there. And then first of all, I'm just going to take a couple, couple of turns of thread over there. And then I'm going to tighten this up. All you need is enough so that that can wiggle in there. You don't need a big amount of wire. And you can see that's going to be fine. And then you're just going to wind back on your wire until you get about three quarters of the way up there. Nice tight turns. Now, some people... Some people put some glue on the shank at this point, but there's no way that that is coming out of there. I can yank on that as hard as I want. So put some glue on it if you want, but you don't need to. I need a new pair of wire cutters. Now I'm going to go back to the end. And get a piece of schlopping. Another piece of, I got to go back into my schlopping here and find a nice wide one. Not terribly wide, but wider than the last body piece. Mm -hmm, mm, this one looks good. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, no, I'm not. All right, first, I need to tie in a little bit more of the longer flash. So I got some of that stuff. So I'm going to tie that in and add a little flash to the back of this thing. So I'll tie this in. And fold it back. And that's just going to sweep back over that area there. You can brush this a little bit if you want to kind of keep the fibers from getting trapped under each other. And that's probably enough flash. I'll tie that off.
stroke it back a little bit, secure it really well. And you can see now that all kind of looks like one piece in the back there. Now I take that big slop and feather and prepare it. I'm just preparing this the same way that I did the other ones. Tie that in. And I'm going to want to go up to about here, maybe a third of the way back from the eye. And so this is longer. So you've started to get more of that taper. Keep folding it as you go. These these hackles may twist on you, and you just have to kind of manipulate them. This one is behaving quite well. The hackle stem starts to get stiff here, but that's okay. And that's good enough. Wind back on. Oops, broke my thread. Oh, no. Got to do that again. Maybe I should have used heavier thread. That's how you... That's how you react to a broken thread. You swear, and then you reattach it and keep going. I may not be able to get enough in here because I lost some of it, but we'll do the best we can here. I'm not going to take the time to grab another feather, which I might have done if I was just tying this for myself. But that's good enough. Okay. That's fine. That'll work. Then I'm going to take I'm going to take a red slop and feather. I'm just going to tie up, put a few turns of red in there to make it look like the gills. Now Blaine Chocolate puts pectoral fins on these. I don't bother. I think they kind of get lost in everything, and it's just an extra step. And this thing takes long enough as it is, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to put any pectoral fins on here, but I figure I get a little, little red in there to imitate the gills. It kind of shows through there. It looks nice. So the, I like the red to be a little bit shorter than the rest of it so that it doesn't stream back all the way just in the gill area. Could be blood from a crippled bait fish. Could be gills, a little touch of red, never hurts. And that is probably enough of that. Stroke it back, wind over. Hey, can you switch the camera, Tom? Oh, God. I'm so sorry. Sorry, there's the red. <laughs> Apologize for that, but it's just it's just wound the same, the same as uh, the other ones. Now I need to find myself a big, big, big schloppen, the biggest one I got, and this looks like it. Nice and full, and I'm not gonna. I just want this longer stuff down at the bottom. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it right here. And to finish it off, we can use white. You don't need really, you don't need hackle pliers with these big hackles either. You can just wind them with your fingers. And I like to go right to the eye. You can really cram this in if you want. Make it nice and full up there in the front. That's probably enough. I didn't switch cameras, did I? Oh yeah, I did. Sorry. Trim that. Clean up that head. You got a couple little fuzzies in there. You can get rid of them with your scissors or with a cauterizer tool. Build up a little bit of a head and put finish. Make sure you don't get any of the UV in the eye of the hook. Hit it with your light. And I'll show you the finished product a little wider here. And there is your wiggly feather game changer. You can just see when this when you retrieve this thing, it kicks from one side to the other. Doesn't foul because these things tend not to foul. And um, it's got a great bait fish profile, cast nice. And then you can put eyes on this um, if you want. I like to use liquid fusion. I don't like to use UV. I don't like to use UV stuff on um, eyes because you can't get you can't get it to to cure behind the eyes so what i do is i use this liquid fusion which seems to hold eyes as well as anything and i put a dab of it on the on the, a piece of paper and get it to come out there we go So you put a little dab of it on there and kind of just flatten, flatten this. Take a glop of it on each side, right about where you want the eyes. Kind of work it into those hackles a little bit so it goes right to the base. And the other side, about the same place. Work it in there good.
and then take yourself a little 3D eye and put one on each side. It's a little off center, Tom. For the camera. Okay. Now it's not, is it? I just slide her in there and press on it. Do the other side. I had another eye somewhere, it's somewhere on my hand. Oh well, I'll find it later. Oh, here it is. And stick that one on there. Make sure they're in the same place on each side. Give them a press. And there you go. Now you got eyes on your little game changer. So that's it. Time consuming fly. What time is it? Oh, four o'clock. We did it in an hour. Not bad. Um, time consuming fly. You may want to add other sections to it, but again, you, you get the concept there. I, I find them, I find them really fun to tie. Um, they're very, they're very satisfying to tie. Oops. My other camera went off. Let me, uh, let me just plug this in and see if I can get it to go back on. That was an accidental fade. <laughs> <laughs> that was an accidental fade. There we go. There's a couple more questions. Um, I tagged them. Okay. Know. All right. What is the longest you have seen these tied as maybe for pike or musk? Oh God, you know, I don't know. Uh, uh, I've got Blaine Chocolate's book, Game Changer, by the way, which is a which is a terrific book. It's really, a, really a great book. Um, and I, I think, I think twelve, fourteen inches long. Some of them, uh, yeah, they can be, they can be really, really long, almost as long as you can you can cast. You know, um, here, let me look in his book and see how long. Let's see how long this is the book, by the way, and it's it's just an awesome book, really well done, and it really uh, shows you how to make these in. Um, let's see what it says. Giant changers. I guess about twelve inches is what he says foot long that's a big fly that's a that's a really big fly i don't think i i don't think i'd want to throw a 12 inch fly for very long but uh yeah you can make them long uh the, the problem is making them short you know making them really short uh with those little mini with those little mini um shanks you, you could tie a fairly small fly any other question are the eyes just optional you know, I think they are. There's people that there's people that uh, think that eyes are essential, particularly on saltwater bait fish patterns. That fish key in on the eyes. I tie a lot of my streamers without eyes, but uh, you got to admit um, it makes the fly look cooler. It it just it just adds a little. You know, it, it's not much. It's not much extra effort or cost, and it really um, it really adds something to the fly. So. I'll leave that. I'll leave that up to you, but I'm not so sure that they're absolutely essential. The pectoral fins, yeah, but you know, I put them on sometimes too. Uh, I, I fish them with all kinds of lines. This fly does not sink well on its own, but I fish them with floating lines in shallow water and lakes and rivers. I fish them with clear and immediate and salt. And I fish them with full sinking lines in, in deep lakes and, and fast rivers. So, um, yes, I, I, um, I, I fish them with all kinds of lines, depending on how deep I need the fly to get. Right. So, um, I fish them with all kinds of lines. Can you use warm? What was that? What, if we put that question back, there's a question about fly lines. 
can you use warm water bass line for steelhead in colder weather? Um, you can, uh, but a warm water, water line has a monofilament core and it's going to get really kinky on you in, in cold water, particularly for steelhead fishing. So it's going to be a problem. You can use it, but it's not going to be very, very, uh, very nice. Uh, by the way, I just, uh, I just did a pot, recorded a podcast with Josh Jenkson, Jenkins of Scientific Anglers about fly lines and about cold versus warm, freshwater versus saltwater floating lines. So that'll be up in a, in a couple of weeks. So um, if you have more questions about fly lines, he should be able to answer them. What size fly rod should I use to catch? Well, it depends on the size of the game changer, Ed. Um, I would say a uh, six or a seven, probably. It's going to be a struggle with a, a anything, a five or below. So a six or a seven. And if you're, you know, fishing one of those 12 inches, you probably want an 11, 10 or 11 weight. Depends on how big your game changers are though, right? You can, you can tie them. You can tie them. Is there a substitute for the schloppen? Not really although if you can if if you can go through a bag of saddle hackles sometimes you will find um you will find some 100 percent web feathers in your saddle hackle bag but there's a, i mean you could you can use a, a big pheasant feather a pheasant body feather or something but um you know slopping's is is not not that expensive it's not that hard to find uh it, most fly shops have it so uh, i don't think there's a good substitute for it because it is it is big and long and webby and there aren't many feathers that are available that are that are like that so get yourself some slopping silver or gray materials you could use to imitate a small shiner yeah michael they um you can you can um you can either tie your fly in all white and uh use uh silver tinsel chenille for the for the segments in between the hackle and then uh color it up with uh permanent markers or you can pr you might be able to find some gray um hen saddles or schloppen but yeah you definitely you can tie this in any any color everybody any color you want I just have to kind of use your imagination. Would Flagler use glue on the shank? I don't know. Probably. Yeah. He uses glue on everything. Uh, by the way, speaking of Flagler, I did a I did a, a podcast that just got released yesterday with Tim Flagler about uh, where how where fly tying has come and how far it's come in the past 50 years. So if you're interested in the history of materials and and um and want to appreciate all the great stuff we have available to us today. Uh, you may want to listen to that podcast. Do you add shot? Yes, Roger, you could add shot. Again, fish this the way you would any streamer. Would you use a sinking line? Yes, if it calls for it. Would you use shot? Yes, if it calls for it. Um, this is just a streamer. It's just it's a, it's a different kind of streamer. How's the action of these game changers compare to once tied with chenille? Ah. <sighs> These these flutter more obviously because of all those hackle fibers. Uh, they flutter a little bit more. Um, I don't know if the action is that much different, but um, they uh, they do they do flutter a little bit more in the water. I tie them both ways. I tie them with the body chenille, and I tie them with hackle. Anything else? The great Ian Colin James, who was a great guy, the late great Ian Colin James, always telling me certain fish like smallmouth will key in on the eyes. Yeah, I know that. I know that people do. I know that people do believe that. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think we'll ever know for sure. But um, um, it's it's worth putting eyes on. You know, it makes a fly look finished. Like makes it look cuter. Makes it look better. And it's not it's not that big of a step to glue a couple of eyes on there. So. Um, yeah, I'd put them on there. All right, everyone. 
Well, I want to thank you for bearing with me today. I know this was a long one. I knew it would be a long one. Um, I did tie a I did tie a standard game changer years ago when we first started doing this, and that was a really long one. Um, but again, um, these are fun. They're not they're not terribly hard. They're just time consuming. If you have the right materials, they're pretty easy, um, and they are they are really satisfying to tie. You know, you sit back and you look at that fly and say, "That looks cool." That really looks cool. And I, I want to fish that. And they are very effective. Uh, they are extremely effective flies. Very deadly. All right, everyone. I want to, again, wish you a happy new year. Uh, I will be back, uh, I think, next week. Uh, Flagler and I, or the week after, um, I, I didn't see it on my calendar. We're supposed to have a tie-off soon. It may be next week. Um, we're going to tie a classic Aussable wolf dry fly. That's the tie off this month. So uh, that should be that should be fun and uh, should be interesting. And I'm sure Tim and I are going to tie it different ways. Ian was your dad, B. Rice. Wow, he was a cool guy. He was a great guy. Very very funny and uh, innovative and a great angler, a great tire. I have a box of flies that he tied for me um, that I've, I've, I've never used. They're, they're um, kept in a special place, but your dad tied me some flies and, um, and I treasure them. I have them, I have them labeled in, in a box somewhere. So um, he's a cool guy and died way too young, unfortunately. All right, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today we'll see you i think next week uh uh what uh we'll put it up we'll put it up put an announcement up uh soon probably uh late this week and uh with the materials uh we're going to use to tie the fly so uh, we'll see you we'll see you soon and again thanks for tuning in